uh, only on Y254. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the morning. Nothing but good music coming your way. Oh, yes. My name is Michelle Ashira. You can follow me across all my social media handle. That is at Michelle Ashira at Rama Goko. So in this particular segment, we dive into the health uh, segment. So we look at mental health. Being the month of May, we are creating more awareness when it comes to mental health and making sure that you're doing all right. So we'll be talking about uh, different aspects when it comes to, when you speak about mental health, what does that mean actually? And uh, we also look at different ways to even curb and make sure that we are uh, healthy in terms of uh, the mental aspect of it. So in studio, I'm joined with Dr. Antonia Wang uh, Wangoi Wangondu. Uh, she is the senior medical doctor. Uh, she's a senior medical doctor, um, healthcare management consultant, relationship and life coach. Hi, Dr. Antonia. Hi. How are you doing? All right, so uh, you wear a couple of hats. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, for someone who is meeting you for the first time, yes. can you uh, give us a brief description of uh, who Dr. Antonia, uh, who she is, apart from uh, the titles that we have gone through? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, as you've heard, uh, I, I wear uh, several hats. Uh, the main one being a medical doctor, which I've been practicing, which I've been doing for the last 13 years. Uh, thereafter, I specialized in uh, healthcare management. Therefore, I do uh, consultancy for a number of uh, healthcare facilities. Most recently, in the last two years, I have been a life coach, a life and relationship coach, which touches a lot on mental uh, health, both in adults and children. All right, fantastic. Yes. So starting us off, yes. uh, how would you define mental health? Well, mental health is... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> right. So mental health, I'd say, is the absence of, uh, uh, you know, any kind of, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is the wellness or the, or the health of the mind, uh, the body and the spirit. We know that all of them are connected. And therefore, when we talk about mental health, it is the absence of illness in any of those uh, three areas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because oh, uh, most people, when, you, when uh, there's the assumption, when we speak about mental health, we tend to just think about the negative aspect of it, where it's, we think about depression, think about anxiety. So uh, what are the four types of mental health that when we speak about mental health, that we can actually direct our mind that this is actually what we are talking about? All right. Thank you for that question. So the four types would be talking about uh, social men uh, mental health. We're talking about uh, physical mental health, psychological mental health. And uh, last but not least, financial, mental health. Uh, there are different areas in which uh, one can be uh, unwell mentally, not necessarily having an illness, for example, a cold or a flu, but rather having uh, an illness uh, psychologically, socially, financially, even spiritually. Now we even talk of spiritual health. Yes. Oh, it's spiritual health. There is spiritual health. So it's, uh, yes. it's like a 360. It's degree. a 360 kind of um, approach to mental health, where we're not just talking about the, the typical kind of health, where when we talk about, when, when we hear someone talking of uh, having a mental illness, the first thing that jumps to mind is, for example, depression or uh, schizophrenia or anxiety. Uh, there could be also something such as spiritual mental health or even social mental health where one is not able to socialize well with their peers or with other people. Yes, yeah, so it's a 360 kind of um, approach to, to health. All right, what yes. are some of the things? Because it's very, when it comes to mental uh, uh, illness, I don't know if that's the right time to go for it. Uh, if someone is going through, for instance, depression or even anxiety attacks, because they are very common, how would you really identify, even as on a personal level, that I am actually not okay? Because we get caught up in life. We get caught up with work, you know. You get caught up with uh, just social life, per se, and you don't really know, get to actually do self, uh, self-awareness and realize, by the way, I am not okay. This is not how normally I would function. At what particular point on a personal level that you actually realize that I am not okay. Uh, thank you for that question. It actually is called mental illness. And I think it's high time we stopped uh, stigmatizing the name mental illness because it is an illness. 
you could also be having a disorder whereby mm -hmm. uh, the mental illness comes together with other uh, illnesses in the body. But for today's purpose, we'll talk about mental illness. And the first thing about um, knowing whether one has a um, mental illness or not is having a lot of self-awareness. And that is by doing regular uh, internal checkup. Mm -hmm. An internal checkup is whereby you um, internalize everything that has been happening in your life, say in the last one week, mm -hmm. not even this one week, but in one day or two days, last one week, and try and identify what could have changed any changes in behavior, changes in appetite, changes in the pattern of sleep, mm -hmm. uh, changes in how um, uh, the mood of a person. So all changes that uh, could be leading to some kind of uh, mental disturbance, as I would call it now, need to be investigated. So once someone realizes that they're having some mental disturbance, then it's always advisable to seek some help to identify whether they're suffering from a mental illness, a mental disorder, and also to know whether the illness or the disorder is temporary or it's uh, something that is, uh, I would say, um, that has been there for a long time. Okay. Yes. All right, and you'll also, there's also the angle whereby you have a family member who is going through a mental mental illness and you don't really know how to go about, even a friend, yeah? You don't know how to go about uh, giving the support system that he or she requires. What would be your advice on that particular angle? Uh, that becomes very tricky, especially in our African setting mm -hmm. where we don't even like to uh, hear that a family member could be suffering from mental illness. Um, I think it's important to, first of all, approach such a person with love and with care because that's one thing that many people with mental illness tend to to crave for. So once you no notice that there could be a family member who is struggling and you as, not necessarily as a health practitioner, but as a, not just an uh, ordinary individual realizes that, that this person is suffering, to approach the person with love and care and not to um, stigmatize or to confront, but rather to express concern about the kind of maybe behavior that you have noticed this person is having or changes in mood that the person has been having. And then you leave it open for the person to disclose to you whether they want to, uh, wh whether they're having some kind of mental um, attack or kind of uh, mental you know, disorder. Uh, it's always good to leave it to the person to have that choice to make whether they would like to disclose it to you or not. And also not to take it personally if they feel that they are not in a position to uh, sp you know speak with you mm -hmm. about what it is they're suffering from then the best would be to just offer your support tell them that you're there for them should they need you and then leave it at that that's usually the best way or rather what i've seen to work quite well for family members who are struggling with a mental illness all oh, right so you just be patient with a them. lot of patience a lot of patience and also uh, seek a lot of uh, knowledge about the, what you think this person might be having. If the person does tell you, for example, uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and uh, you know you don't, uh, for example, you don't know what it's about, then before you even uh, try to offer support, it's good to also try and educate yourself about what is bipolar disorder, how how does it manifest. What are the treatment options? Where can one get treatment? So that also you're giving this person some value and you're able to uh, you know, help this person go through the illness. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. I think that's, that's, that explains a lot. Because we would, uh, as friends rather, there's the aspect whereby you would really like your other person to just open up and tell you, and you, you, you don't understand why they wouldn't open up and just shed light on what they're actually uh, going through. Can one prevent like mental health problems, is mental health problems, illness that it is? Is, is there things that we can do to just make sure that, you know, we, we keep sane and we don't get to the point where it's extreme? to the point where it's maybe depression or just uh, anxiety attacks. And well, at it probably could also explain further when you talk about anxiety attacks, what are we actually looking at? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, in terms of prevention, uh, it's, I would say it's twofold because, uh, you know, there's that mental illness which is caused by uh, genetic factors. 
So it becomes very difficult to control it if, uh, for example, there are several members of your family who are suffering from mental illness. Uh, it becomes almost inevitable that at some point in your life you are going to uh, struggle with some kind of mental illness. But however, awareness is always better, you mm -hmm. know, knowing that, for example, uh, my father or my mother had a particular mental illness and to be on the lookout for certain signs and symptoms that would be uh, suggestive that I myself might be suffering from mental illness. Um, and then also, again, these mental disorders that come about because of the kind of environments that we are living in. Uh, we find that many people are working in very toxic environments. Uh, people are living in neighborhoods that are not safe or they are in, for example, relationships that they know they shouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. So there's that element of um, trying as best as one can to get themselves out of a situation that will, would inevitably lead to mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And yeah. uh, because I, f I feel like we, as I mentioned earlier on, we can really get caught up in life. Yeah. And uh, is there like a process of self-assessment uh, to know that actually uh, I am unwell? There is a process of self-assessment. Uh, if, you, if you're doing it for yourself, then uh, what one would do is uh, what we call a P9 form. A P9 form is a form you can download easily online okay. and uh, it takes you through a series of uh, some few questions and each question has a score. So for example, one of the questions would be how many nights in a sleep, how many days in a night are you getting adequate sleep and um, if, it's, if it's less than one, you know, less than five. So for each particular value, then you score yourself. Depending on the value of the of the result of the P9, then you'll be able to know if you could be suffering from a mental illness or a mental disorder. That's an easy-to-use tool that one can download online. And there are many others, but the one I know we use in Kenya a lot is the P9 form. Uh, if one goes to a, a healthcare facility, then in that case, then there's what we call the DSM-5 uh, criteria, where it's much more thorough and the doctor is able to take the patient through a series of several questions, several analysis, to see the exact kind of uh, mental illness or mental disorder that they could be suffering from. All right. Uh, yes. in, in the department of you being a life coach and uh, relationship? Uh? Relation, it's uh, uh, it's a, rela a life and relationship coach. All right. Uh, yes. I feel like it all, it all connects to each other. Uh, and I feel like uh, they complement each other when it comes to mental health. Because as you mentioned earlier, you can be in relationships which are toxic. And one of them is maybe a narcissistic kind of a relationship and lots of manipulation involved. When you meet such, such clients, uh, because this is what they have known for, um, you know, a couple of probably yeah. years down the line, the trauma is there. So what would be the process looking like? Because I feel like uh, when it comes to a narcissistic relationship, uh, for instance, one celebrity, Rihanna, that she mentioned that she was one with Chris Brown and she would constantly go back. Uh, that is during the, uh, the interview with Oprah Winfrey, that she would constantly be going back to that person. And it took around like seven times before she would, like walked out of it. Uh, what usually goes on when it comes to the victim's mindset and uh, the process of just, you know, getting out in a toxic uh, relationship like that? Uh, life and relationship coaching is very interesting because the solution inevit inevitably has to come from the person who has come to seek uh, my help in this case. So um, it's uh, usually not for me to tell them that, you know, you're in a toxic relationship, you need to get out. What usually happens is that through different tools and uh, different uh, guidelines, we are able to go through whatever dilemma the person has brought to the table and help them to see uh, the kind of relationship that they are in. And then the ultimate decision has to be theirs. Case in point, like you said, Rihanna went back seven times before she was able to completely leave. That's probably because uh, psychologically or mentally she wasn't ready or fully convinced to leave that uh, narcissistic or toxic relationship. It happens a lot, especially amongst our young people who have also grown up with a lot of... Um, uh, influence of alcohol and other substances whereby you find that your mind is also not uh, is not operating at at the best capacity because you're some many times intoxicated or under the influence of certain substances so your mind is not very clear all the time 
So usually life coaching and relationship coaching need someone to really call themselves for a meeting and decide that I'm ready to um, to tackle the issues that could be making me not progress to the level that I'd like to progress to and then to make those difficult decisions and stick by them. Again, it's a constant process. It's a constant process. It's not that, you know, you do the life coaching, say, once and you're it's okay. Not. Many times it's something that you'll have to keep on, not necessarily going back to the coach, but at least coaching yourself to know what are your triggers, what would make you go back to such a situation and how to prevent them and also learning a lot about how to be kind to oneself because I also feel that we live in a society where, where there's so much harshness and, uh, and um, you know, being mean to ourselves and how we talk to ourselves, uh, learning how to speak to ourselves with kindness and uh, compassion also does help one to overcome any kind of uh, mental health challenges that they may be having. I think it's uh, it's it's it requires a lot of patience <laughs> as yeah, a patient, and it's not like a one day event. No. It's a consistent, uh, uh, deliberate, yeah, and exactly. being intentional. intentional. And I like the way you have put it that as long as uh, I am not willing to, you know, make that move, and. At the end of the day, it boils down to me. Yes. Even though we do this, even though we have the session, the counseling sessions, yes. and all that. Let's speak about self worth and self love, because mm -hmm. it also boils down to that. How mm -hmm. can we build onto that? Because at times we get into toxic uh, environments because we lack self worth, we lack self love. There's uh, esteem issues as well. How do we build that? Uh, building that again is something that takes time. And also to realize at what point in your life did you lose that self-worth or self-love or self-care. And for many people, they realize that they lost it in childhood, where probably they grew up with very strict parents. And again, I'm not here to chastise the parents and say that they did wrong. I think many parents did what they knew at, at that time, at the, at the circumstances of the time. They tried to raise their children as best as they could. However, I'm not, however, there are also those parents who also probably were suffering from mental illness and, you know, uh, did certain things to le uh, lessen or lower the self-esteem of this person. So the first step usually is to identify what, at what point did this person, or say it's Antonio, if I'm doing my own internal reflection, I'll say, at what point did I lose my self-esteem or my self-worth? At what point did I stop loving myself? Have I ever loved myself really, you know? Mm -hmm. And then from there on is to now um, start healing that inner child, start healing that inner child. And once that inner child starts to get healed, then the adults can get healed. But it's very hard for an adult to heal themselves, yet they're still bearing the wounds from childhood, teenage years, a lot of trauma. Uh, so it's always very good to try and do a lot of introspection and um, you know, I hear many times people talk about, you know, just forgive whoever did that uh, terrible thing to you and move on. Mm. Forgiveness doesn't take a day. You know, let's, uh, <laughs> let's be honest with ourselves yes. and know that forgiveness can take time. And, you know, you could always, um, first of all, work on yourself and say, I'll forgive when I'm able to forgive. But let's also not push ourselves to do things that sometimes are not practical, you know, it told, look at the person, today they've done this and tomorrow you forgive them. Many times it doesn't work like that. I like the way you put it, like forgiveness yeah. takes time. It and then does. there's the aspect, earlier when we started this conversation, there's mm. the spiritual health you mentioned, yes. right? Yes. Now th there's a disconnect mm -hmm. because n when you go to church, there, mm -hmm. there are certain doctrines that will teach you that, you know, forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe you went through a traumatizing experience. They tell you, pray about it. Okay, things will be well, which I believe in prayer and I believe actually in God. But now there's, because you have to go through the emotions and then comes in uh, a life coach or even the counseling sessions, right? Now, in a situation where there's that level of disconnect, how do you handle that? Uh, well, it becomes a bit uh, tricky because, you know, uh, Kenya, we're a very religious country. Uh, and what I try and ask people is to look towards spirituality more than reli uh, religiosity. Because mm -hmm. when you're more of a spiritual person, then you'll understand these concepts of forgiveness better. 
but it's true that um, many times you know people will go and seek uh, help from churches and churches have played a key role in helping people to recover and to heal but sometimes is that um, kind of push to make a person you know uh, want to or make a person heal quickly or get over it quickly and it's not always um, practical so what i say is that um introspect a lot of introspection is important and learning to know that you know for example if i went through a particular trauma in my youth and uh, i'm trying to go through the phases of healing uh, try and see is this person helping me in a way that makes sense to me or is it that i'm trying to be pushed into a a corner to forgive them and forget and then maybe after a year later i have a kind of a you know mental breakdown because i really didn't forgive what i did was just to kind of push it at the back of my mind so i would encourage churches also to engage us in how they are also engaging their you know their uh, their members on as issues especially to do with trauma and to also uh, go through trauma training and realize that yes it is true um, in many uh, doctrines uh, Christian Islam many of them they talk about healing and they talk about uh, forgiveness but there's also the issue of time which I think many of us owe to, owe to ourselves the time to uh, allow ourselves to heal Mm, yes. I love that. Mm. Time to allow yourself to heal. Yes. Uh, speak to me about affirmations, the importance of affirmations, because yes. uh, they're very quite um, uh, rampant out there. You know, do affirmations, and then you have meditations, and if you're in a better position or into yoga, you can as well do that. How is that, how is that impactful when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, building up your uh, positive mental health yes. gear? Uh, thank you. Personally, I love affirmations. I love anything to do with affirming yourself because I believe that only a person who affirms themselves uh, is really going to get to that place where they truly believe the things that they are saying. And again, with affirmations, it doesn't mean that once you affirm yourself today, then that becomes your truth from that day forward. It's An affirmation is something that you have to say over and over until you start to believe that that is the truth about yourself. For example, an affirmation could be, um, I am intelligent, I am smart, I am worthy, I am kind, you know. Uh, those are affirmations that for many people, they have to repeat them over and over until they believe they believe it themselves and the, from there then they're able to to have I would say a good mental health or good uh, healthy mental status mm -hmm. yes and then uh, about self-talk uh, self-healing self-love all this comes again with knowing oneself and knowing that um, these things are important and especially in the day and age that we live in especially with the era of social media where everyone seems to be living this uh, absolutely amazing and glamorous life you know and we see these people posting a lot of uh, soft life yeah and uh, <laughs> we wonder what am I doing wrong that you know I'm not able to have this soft life mm -hmm. yet this person seems to be on holiday every two months oh yeah every other day uh, every other day they're on holiday <laughs> so <laughs> the, the pressure piles up the pressure piles up so mm -hmm. it's important to also realize that social media sometimes is uh, you know trying to create an image that is not really there so understanding yourself, loving yourself, understanding the circumstances that you are in at this particular moment in time. And then from there, knowing that, you know, things do get better and life does get better. But understanding yourself and knowing that sometimes what we see is not what is really there. Many times it's an illusion. Mm. Yes. I love that. So as we wind up, mm. if someone is, who has been following up this conversation and they're in a dark place, they're trying to find that light at the end of that tunnel and they feel like, you know, well, I am tired, you know, yeah. I am really tired. What would you tell that person? Well, I would tell them, first of all, I would applaud them for, um, you know, realizing that they're tired and realizing that, uh, they maybe would need some help. Uh, the next thing I would ask them is to uh, look for help. Help is out there if you if you check. Uh, I know in Kenya sometimes uh, there's a, a lot, there's a thing of you know it's expensive. You know, getting a counselor or a therapist is expensive. But there are those who also do it for free. You know, because you find somebody who genuinely is in a very dark space. They can't afford to pay for counseling, but 
it's very difficult to walk away from such a person and you genuinely offer it for free. So I would ask that person to look for help, whether it be in their church, whether it's with a, either in school, and many schools have uh, counseling centers or workplaces. Some workplaces now are investing in their staff and offering an in-house counselor to make sure that their staff are mentally okay. okay. So I would ask that person to get help. All right. Uh, if someone wants to keep the conversation going, even interact with you yes. and seek help uh, in different areas of their life, because yes. uh, you cover the whole 360 when yes. it comes to yeah. life and relationship coaching as well, mental health inclusive, how can they reach out to you? Thank you. My social media handle is Dr. Antonia Wangui on Instagram, mm -hmm. on Facebook, and uh, uh, I'm Kui Antonia. You could also reach me through my office line. I'm happy to give that. Okay. It is a uh, zero seven nine six nine double six seven eleven. Okay, you can repeat that. On, sure. On <laughs> Absolutely. It's a zero seven nine six nine double six. 7-11. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Antonia, for Thank creating you. time to be with us. Thank you. Just looking much. at mental health in uh, on a 360 degree level. All right. Uh, that is Dr. Antonia Ongoi. Uh, she's the senior med she's a senior medical doctor, uh, healthcare management consultant, relationship and life coach. Looking at mental health, being May, uh, which is a mental uh, mental health awareness month. So we are, uh, of course, pushing the narrative of positive mindset and creating self-awareness of oneself and, you know, uh, sh uh, spreading love, okay? Self-worth, self-love is all that matters, no matter what goes on in your life. So keep sane, keep safe. At y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. At Rama Google is where you can find him across his social. So be right back. <laughs>